You know what's fun? Putting together your pool list for next week. Comic Book Fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0, and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you my top 10 most anticipated comics of the week, and this is for the week of 9-11-19. That's right, guys, this is the show where each and every week, I help you guys hopefully make decisions on what comics to buy for the following week, right? So I give you my top 10 most anticipated comics. So at any time, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that all-important bell so you don't miss any content from me. All right? So let's get started. Before we jump into the top 10, there's always that book that's on the hot seat, the one that I could potentially drop. And the book that's on the hot seat this week goes to Miles Morales. I think this is issue 10 of the series, but it's otherwise known as the big 250th anniversary issue. That's right, fans. 250th anniversary issue of Miles Morales. It, it claims to be the big one, right? Hopefully it drives the direction of the story because I feel like that this is the one, you know, this story has really lacked direction of where it wants to go, okay? So this book is 40 pages. It's $4.99. And it says, that's right, it's our 250th issue. Miles Morales' birthday. But you're getting all the gifts. A mystery dating back to Miles' first appearance? Answered. A terrifying villain destined to become one of Marvel's greatest adversaries? Revealed. Special guests like maybe Peter Parker, Spider-Man? You know it all busting out of 25 pages by main series storytellers Saladin Ahmed and Javier Garan, plus a bonus backup, all right, story. So, all right, right there, that kind of turns me off a little bit because there's a bonus story. I want 40 pages of main story, damn it. If you're going to give me a good book, right, and if you want to really capture me here, you got to do it. If this one does not capture me, it's going away. I will not read it anymore because I've been on the fence with this book for quite a long time. All right, so there's your hot seat book. Let's get into this countdown, starting at number 10. And number 10 this week, it goes to Symbiote of Vengeance, issue one. This is another one of those absolute carnage tie-ins, which for the most part, they've been really good, okay? Didn't like Miles Morales tie-in. And I was a fan of the Carnage vs. Deadpool one, which comes out this particular week as well. So that's why it's not on my top 10. But with this Symbiote of Vengeance one, Carnage is hunting down previous symbiote hosts for codexes. That will unlock a direct link to the symbiote god Null. Pages $4.99. I don't know, guys. I don't know how tied in this will really be and if this is worth your hard-earned cash for four dollars and 99 cents i'm gonna try it out we'll see where it goes all right so coming in at number nine and this is from dc comics this is gotham city monsters issue one this is kind of a leviathan tie-in as well and leviathan has dismantled shade so that means frankenstein is once again free agent and so he's gonna go amongst some of the other characters um in here as well i think one of them is killer croc and lady clayface and uh, orca and vampire andrew bennett so those are some of the characters that you can you know expect in this particular book this one is three dollars and 99 cents and it's 32 pages i'm buying this one because it just looks like it could be a lot of fun so i'm picking that up so that one's number nine what's number eight well number eight goes to a new number one this week and this one is king thor issue one okay superstars jason aaron and esad ribbit conclude their epic 
Thor story. So this looks like the end of Jason Aaron's run when it comes to Thor. This book is 32 pages. This is $3.99. Again, I'm not a huge Thor fan, but I love the War of the Realms. I thought it was really well done. And you're still dealing with ramifications off of that. You get to see Jane Foster's Valkyrie, and now you're getting King Thor. So this is all kind of tied together here. So I'll see how this one turns out. Again, $39, $399, can't beat it, right? So we'll see what happens. All right, so next, coming in at number seven, jumping on this book because of what's been announced with Captain Marvel, okay? So this is Captain Marvel. This is issue 10, okay? And this is the Fall to Pieces storyline. Now, based off of what we heard in last week's news, that Captain Marvel is becoming evil, and you got to see this cool image of her being evil and it just looked badass so i was like all right i'm on board for a captain marvel evil person you know why not now i haven't read the series since issue two i don't think so i'm a little bit off from it but i'm sure i can probably catch on to see what's up and it says it's official new hero star is in and captain marvel is out as carol struggles to deal with her changing role and unravel the mystery of what's happening to her powers a risky new alliance she has forged may turn to be more dangerous than what she's expected. Will Carol be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice to save a world that has turned against her? Well, who knows? We'll see. So again, 32 pages, $3.99 could be a really good direction on where this book goes. So next on the list, coming in at number six, this is Silver Surfer Black. Okay, this is issue number four. Uh, the darkness is spreading and Noel is winning. But when Silver Surfer discovers something with the potential power to turn the tides, is he prepared to pay the terrible price for awakening it? Will the cost of survival take its heavy toll on him? Does he have any other choice? Now, this book has been fun. I know a lot of fans have not been... Uh, you know on board with the artwork and whatnot and it's really trippy and kind of out there but the overall story has been cool to see what Silver Surfer has actually done against Null what he's been willing to sacrifice in the last issue we've got to see um, uh, Silver Surfer go on to the uh, the living planet, um, was it Eon or I, I forgot the name. If I said it right. And, uh, what happens is you find out that silver surfer has been in the past and we get to see a young Galactus be born. He kind of implants himself into the living planet and, and he's being incubated from there. So that's kind of weird, right? Knowing that he becomes a planet eater, but he's growing inside a planet. That's insane right there. So cool series. I've enjoyed it. This makes my uh, number six. Let's crack that top five. Number five goes to Powers of X issue four. Now, solid series all the way around. Again, I say this each and every week. This is not the best series because there is a lot of information to take in, but it is good to see what Jonathan Hickman is going to do with these X-Men in the long term. Mora is a major player in this book, and this particular issue has to deal with Mr. Sinister. So I'm very curious to see what happens going forward with the series. It's starting to come towards an end, and then all these other X-Men books will be released. All right. So moving on to number four. This is an independent book. This is by Image Comics. This is Trees, Three Fates, Issue One. Okay. This is a, a IGN says it's a uniquely exciting read. I don't know if it will be for you, but it's done by Warren Ellis and Jason Howard. Okay. Which is currently being adapted for television. It returns with a brand new story of murder and ghosts in the remote Russian village of Toshka. There's a dead body by the leg of the tree that's landed 11 years ago. Police Sergeant Clara Voronova, still hunted by that day, has no idea how this murder will change everything, nor what awaits her in the tree's shadow. So that's pretty creepy, right? Seems like this horror type of mystery book. So moving on to number three and number three goes to the amazing spider-man this is issue 29 the aftershocks from mary jane's recent decision are felt throughout spider-man's life with the throwing peter life into upheaval and super villain rearing their heads it's not helpful 
32 pages, 399. The book doesn't really give you that much a description. And I currently didn't read issue 28. But nevertheless, I think I think things are starting to rev up when it comes to this series. And I'm anxiously to see who the freak is Kindred. Like I need to know who it is. Now, if it was revealed in issue 28, uh, I haven't found out yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in it. And then I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in 29. Shit's got to hit the fan very soon with this title, man. It's been building and building and building this whole time. So that makes number three. Let's move on to number two. And number two this week goes to Justice League Odyssey. This is issue 13. Okay, uh, last issue was great. I jumped on this reading issue 11 and issue 12. In the last issue, we got the death of Jessica Cruz. Darkseid has returned to full power. The Justice League Odyssey members are the new gods. And I'm just like, wow. I was blown away by that last issue because Darkseid gave her no mercy. Jessica Cruz, really, you got to see her grow as a character here. And, uh, you know, she stood up for herself. She wasn't afraid. But at the end, it didn't do her any good. She got zapped. So I want to see what happens going forward with this book. And is Jessica Cruz actually dead? I don't know. But <sighs> we'll see. So very cool book. And uh, looking forward to it. All right. Next, we move on to my number one pick of the week. And my number one was is Venom issue 18. Obviously, it is an absolute Carnage tie-in. And Carnage is unlikely and symbiotic allies swarm Venom in his family. As all hell continues to break loose as Carnage army swarms the streets of New York, Eddie Brock has his hands full at Rex's warehouse. So in the last issue, in issue 17, we got to see the Life Foundation symbiotes um, actually intrude the maker's lair and it was going after the kids. And just as the Life Foundation symbiotes were going after Norman Osborn's kid and, uh, and Dylan, which is Brox's kid, uh, we wound up seeing the sleeper make its return. So that was the big cliffhanger at the end of the last issue. And you're like, damn, that's from Venom's first host. And you're like, wow, that is awesome. And I think obviously the best tie-in is the Venom series because Donny Cates writes that book and he writes Absolute Carnage. So it just ties in very beautifully uh, within each other. And at the end of each issue, I'm just like, I want more. So really solid book, really great tie-in. If there's any tie-in that you get to Absolute Carnage, this is the one to pick up. Had a great cliffhanger, and that was my number one. And that was my top 10 most anticipated comics of the week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Now I want to hear what books you're most anticipating. And guys, I really appreciate you taking the time for watching this series. Seems to be doing quite well, and uh, hopefully it continues to grow. Make sure you share, like, subscribe to the channel, and again, don't forget to hit that bell. And until the next comic book review, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.